Welcome back to another episode of Car John, powered by Collex and Car Dealer Pro. I am David. He is Alex Lynn Delco Rips on Instagram. We have a great guest today, our guy Mark Franklin, uh, Prestige Pools, How you doing? Sports Cards. Excited to have you on, man. Appreciate uh, you for having me. Yeah, it's gonna be exciting. We're gonna talk about the hobby, the ins and outs, how Mark uh, or Prestige, I guess I should call you. Um, <laughs> everyone knows you as Prestige um, on IG, but yeah, we we'll talk about the hobby, what he's collecting, uh, how he got into the hobby, and so forth. So. Uh, yeah, just tell everyone about your background, how you got in the hobby, what are you doing now, and then I'm sure we'll get into yeah. an assortment of topics of from course. who, what cards should it be this much money, and of then course. we'll just get into it, man. Yeah, so, yeah, floor is yours. Um, yeah, cool. Appreciate you guys for having me. Thank yeah, you. Welcome. Um, so, uh, realistically, I got, I've been in the cards ever since I was a little kid. Uh, my first ever card that I do remember buying, because I used to get like, used to try and collect the FLIR sets with my dad, like the football ones, and obviously have it all, the loaders and the sleeves and whatnot. Um, but when I, I guess like, like 2006, uh, Ocean City, there was this card shop next to the hotel I was staying at with my mom. And um, I actually have it in my car. I should have brought it up here. Uh, LeBron James, 2003-04 rookie card. It was like a PSA 9. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously at the time I knew LeBron James was going to be the man. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I only had $20 on me because $20 could get you anything in 2006, not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, the the guy had it up for like thirty five or forty five dollars. I think it was forty five dollars, and I had to run back to the hotel, get twenty bucks from my mom to go get the card, and I bought it for forty bucks. I just still have it. It's literally the only card that I will never sell. It's the home. one of him in the suit. Nah, it's it's the it's um it's the upper deck MVP. He's like dunking. Oh yeah, it says, yeah, it says rookie yeah. on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, it reached like twelve hundred dollars during the peak of like, really? like twelve oh fifteen hundred bucks. God. But I was I already knew like the like the sentimental value it had to sure, me. Sure. And now of course it's worth like hundred fifty bucks. But, yeah. um, but yeah, so that's really how I got into it. Um, I kind of just consistently, I wish I collected more during high school. I did not. Uh, obviously, when the pandemic hit and the boom started the rush, I obviously started to pay attention. Um, and then I saw people going live, such as Pull Wax, Pull Kings, and whatnot. And then I just saw, like, random pages start at the form. I was like, I can do this. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then I just started the hustle. I went to Walmart 5 a.m. I was sending people to Walmart, giving them cash to go get boxes, and then... Um, First night I ever went live on Instagram, my Venmo said 1600 bucks, and I was like, oh, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I'm doing sports cards. Um, so then I just consistently hustled, hustled, retail every Thursday. I would drive to the, the Walmart in Rio Grande right outside of Wildwood because I already knew their restock was 3 o'clock every Thursday. I would scoop, I would, me and two other people scoop the whole shelf. Um, and then I was, during the pandemic, I was also bartending. So I was bartending, but the bars closed at 10, 30, 11 o'clock. So then I would go live at 12, run like three breaks till like 2, 30, yeah. 3 in the morning. Um, and hustle like that. And then I obviously became friends with Pull Wax, Mikey, and all those guys, very good people down in Miami. Um, so I obviously made the right connections, did the right things the right way. Um, attended all the shows consistently with Santiago Sports and all those good guys in the hobby. Um, and then kind of just made a name for myself. Um, since I've transitioned to whatnot, it's been more of just a repack for me because mm -hmm. uh, they take their percentage and the margins really aren't there when it comes to breaking retail or hobby yeah. on the app, depending on how many followers you have. Even though I do have like 19,000 followers on whatnot, which is that's pretty cool. Um, but the margins really, it just doesn't make sense for me. I would be doing it. I would be doing it for a loss. I wouldn't be doing it for free if I tried to break. Um, but with the repack stuff, man, I've been running, I've been running prestige packs. Last night I just ran volume 114 of prestige packs. I've been doing it since awesome. March of 2021. Um, so the consistency is definitely there. And um, yeah, I mean, it's all about being consistent. I think you do. You mentioned about uh, you know going to Walmart, Alex. I'm sure you went to like the same thing Walmart, too. Like, thinking back to that time is just so wild. Like Nuts. I did that. Like I. I have the chills actually. Like I have Vinny, <laughs> Vinny, Vinny from uh, Vin Lombardo from uh, the, now the Card Capital. Like, yeah. I was hanging with him before he got the job with Card Capital. Like going to the Walmart here in yeah. Voorhees. Yep. Uh, I, I think remember, everybody has a couple friends that you met at side of a Target of that you see in the of hobby course. now. One of my main. Yeah. And it's kind of I'm, like you look at him and you're like, yep. yeah, let's not talk about that time. Like, <laughs> one of my one of my it. main buyers that goes to shows for me and and buys four prestige packs. I met him at Walmart. Wild, yeah, crazy. Um, yeah, we, I would I would do Walmart like three days a week because I know the Rio Grande was Thursday, the one in South Philly was Tuesday. Like, they all had their different. You know, it's not as crazy. That, like one thing about it is like thinking back, it seems so crazy because the cards in those boxes now aren't really worth it. But at the time, True. they were Real. like wow. the silver Lamello was huge. It was a huge card. So really, Zion was like three thousand. Dude, yeah, NBA <laughs> Hoops Lamello base paper card was, was PSA ten was like two three grand. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Kind of wild. Yeah. That's pretty um, nice. what, what was your biggest like success story of like picking something like uh that's easy. Like flipping like Yeah. Well, uh so my What do you want to talk about? No, that? no, of course not. My first national uh I went to was twenty twenty, obviously, right? What year are we? Twenty twenty one. Um and it was in Chicago. And I was, everyone was buying Justin Herbert. Joe Barrow was coming off the ACL tear. Mm -hmm. I always like to put my money where no one else is looking. Um, so I was buying Joe Barrow. I was looking for the right Joe Barrows to get into, right? Um, so then my friend Bagels and Wax, shout out Vadim. He told me this guy had a Joe Barrow raw. It was a green field level to five. Um, and the guy really got out of a break. He was in there for like 80 bucks. So I already knew I could, I could possibly, you know, really get a steal here. And I was like, I'll give you a thousand. And he was like, Okay, so I got a green field level five uh, for a thousand dollars. Joe Barrow came back, created that national, came back BGS nine five True Gen Plus, um, and then that same national, I had a uh, Kyler Red Auto to twenty five, I think a Luca card, and I traded into a Joe Barrow Gold um, for like a thousand cash. So probably like total investment two cards is probably like thirty four hundred bucks. Yeah, like a twenty four hundred hour trade and a thousand dollars. Obviously, the green came back at BGS 95 plus. Uh, the gold was a select uh, select club level, obviously, to 10, PSA 10. Um, I sold both cards for a combined before he played the Raiders in the playoffs that year uh, for like 19K. Wow. wow. That's yeah. A good, that's a good one. Uh, no, no. Some, uh, um, one was 8,000 Bitcoin, but I immediately took out. <laughs> um, and the other was basically, yeah, cash. See, it's funny what you talk about how like you know you offer to do a thousand dollars and like it's up to the person at the end of the day like i don't feel bad like not that someone would feel bad but like I mean, someone's willing to part with it yeah he exactly like, yeah. like if they did a day you're happy i'm happy and yeah. like yeah i could have made maybe an extra you could have sold that car for 1800 at the time of course, but, like, of course the person just wants to get rid of it I, and like did his own his or her due diligence to get rid of it like absolutely it is what it is like let like yeah it's fair game yeah like, i mean even my even if i would have held it one more week when he beat the Raiders, I probably could have made an extra couple of grand myself, realistically, yeah. or even held it before he even played in the Super Bowl. But I did it. I was out the door before the playoffs. I got rid of them both. Yeah. Um, and I love Joe Burrow. I mean, he's to me top two quarterback. It's Mahomes, Burrow, Hurts. Um, I want to go back for a second on your kind of your origin and your business now, because I've actually I've been a customer of yeah, Prestige yeah. Packs, and it. like I've always had a really good experience. Like, mm -hmm. what do you? Um, what do you like about running like a repack show? And yeah, like why why does that kind of like been your lane to focus on other than the fees? Um, so basically, realistically, I went to school for communications broadcasting, so I do kind of enjoy putting on a nice little show. Yeah, obviously. Um, and realistically, all the cards that I go through on a weekly or biweekly basis are is pretty phenomenal. Um, the cards I get to see, like that, like it's it's really super cool. Um, I mean, I've had Jackie OG Jackie Robinson rookie card SGC two point five. Like I've had. The Juan Soto X Factors last night. I had a Kobe now and then auto uh, all card to flawless. The last sale on that card was $15,000 in 2020. Wow. Last night I called it 5,500 because all called the 6K. So 5,500 yeah. was the right number to call it. But, um, but yeah, just to even uh, just to come across all the cards in general, and honestly, to put on a show, like I have fun. Like I'm not really dragging. Yeah, some nights I grind harder than others. Um, but like it's, I really enjoy putting on a show. Um, cause that's what I really did when I was ripping retail. I was just having fun, putting on a show, getting nuts for, you know, a silver Zion, a gold yeah. Zion, like getting, bang. getting, <laughs> bang, like it just yeah. getting nuts. But now it's more the, um, I don't know. Everyone's fully indulged in the show. Like, you know what to expect. I'm going to be playing like oldie music. Like the vibes are going to be high. Like I'm not playing the new stuff. Like yeah. ever, like I really try to stay accustomed to my clientele. Um, and obviously I have my consistent buyers who I appreciate greatly. Um, and then I have new guys that come in and are gladly satisfied like last night the guy won, guy won i want to say five packs he was a first time buyer but he ended up first in the head draft for one of 55 hour kobe bryant who's probably into the show for maybe 1500 bucks no yeah. yeah you know no it, it's funny you talk about like bringing some personality to breaks because i've seen some breaks where people are just really boring of course it's of like course. oh hey guys like we're like i mean i've seen your videos yeah, yeah. you're a south philly guy like yeah, 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 yeah. that's <laughs> that flair to you, i like, just bring the energy regardless of yeah, whatever, it's important, whatever though, i'm trying like, to do yeah you keep people in the room like you of said course. you had that, those reti retaining a lot of inside there. jokes too like i feel like if you, if you tune in you know my lingo you know my lingo, you know my lingo yeah. like uh, I Reef, think that helps a Reef, lot. Naturally, <laughs> the, correct. Yeah, yeah, like, I, I, yeah, I got plenty of them. I think yeah. the other thing too is like <laughs> in a break, right? Like, you know, you could even open a case and it could be a dud case where of there's course. no exciting. Moves. Absolutely. But your repacks, like you're controlling that, and you know, like there's, there's no value. repack show where there's not going to be an exciting. Pack, of course, of course. Which I think 
adds to it when I'm like as a viewer, even if I don't buy, it's exciting to watch. Yeah, like la last night I probably had like I maxed out like maybe like four, 52 people in the room like max, and I want to say I only had like 28 different buyers, so I'm still entertaining 30 other people that are yeah. just there to enjoy the show regardless. Yeah, and when it comes to like value back regardless. I mean, obviously everything's a gamble when you open a box, open a repack regardless. I mean, if you go play roulette and you, this is my exact analogy to anyone that talks about a floor, right? You go play roulette and you go put a hundred dollars on black and it lands on red, they collect. You spend $250 on a repack with me, you're, the most you're gonna lose is 150. They have a hundred dollar floor. So like, regardless of, of what the case may be, like you're not gonna be out. And I, there's some people that get, some people on that app that they, People, there's that app, whatnot is crazy right now. The amount of sellers, the amount of buyers, and obviously people are just funneling in there every day, which is obviously great for the hobby, but sometimes bad for the hobby because you have those buyers who really are uneducated, and then you have the sellers who like feed off the uneducated buyers, where they're giving you a fifteen dollar floor and say four thousand dollar ceiling, but seventy percent of the packs are twenty bucks. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, right? Uh, speaking of uh, whatnot, like where do you see uh, Fanatics Live and the whatnot? Though? Well, I'm super intrigued by Fanatics Live. I'm super intrigued by Michael Rubin. I'm super intrigued that he's literally has little baby signing cards. Like that's huge. Yeah. Like that brings a whole other dimension of people that are like, yep. I want a little baby autograph. You know what I'm saying? And people hear about, you know, the Mickey Mantles of the world and the LeBron James when you're not out of the hobby. Like those are the names that people focus on, obviously. Um, but now those people are going to be like, little baby has a signed card. Okay. <laughs> I want to open up an Allen and get their pack. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like that that's just how that comes in. So I mean, Brad Michael Rubin is is legit and is obviously only gonna bring positive things to the hobby. I don't know everything about Fanatics Live, but I can't wait to learn. Um obviously whatnot right now is is booming. So I'm definitely throwing no hate towards whatnot. But I don't I don't see this is my opinion. I don't see whatnot going away. I don't no, know if you guys no, do not at all. I think if 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 they lose more uh card central card sellers like there's people on there like our friend american arbitrage who just finds like jerseys and shirts of and like course. like i think that yeah if anything like you'll see sports cards and like go down a little bit but you'll see like you know shoe game go up or what of course, uh, of course. And everything else yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah i don't think they're going anywhere why not I, personally i don't think why not is going anywhere despite fanatics live uh, like i said you may lose a couple sellers and people will probably utilize both both platforms you know yeah. um if they're smart enough i mean if i have the if I have the willpower or the money to back it, I'll gladly would like to utilize both platforms. Um, but I don't see whatnot going anywhere. My buddy Culture Kicks, again, the sneaker game crushes it on whatnot. Yeah. They have almost like a hundred K followers. Yeah, I sometimes just, just watch random like like people are yeah. selling like I mean, people are selling vintage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Vintage I, you can get me wrestling I'll, I'll spend thirty on vintage, you know. You got me for thirty bucks yeah. to tax to shipping. Like I'm I'm in if I see something I it's like. It's a whole other demographic too. There's there's cool bags, there's there's stuff for women, like you know, yeah, all yeah, sorts yeah, yeah. of different you But know. it realistically it's nuts because it all started with sports cards. Yeah. Because it started whatnot legitimately started off literally fed off the boom of sports cards and was able to evolve into this yeah. massive platform of selling really anything, which is great. Like honestly, it's a great platform. There's really no other platform that you can realistically buy anything you want when it comes to when it comes to like things you want. Basically. The crazy thing is, I I, um, I think I read that whatnot started to f sell Funko Pops. Like that was like their main. Oh, that objective. was their main. Yeah, but and then, what like, really they, blew out was the sports. Yeah, cars. Yeah, it's like wait, people are selling sports cars, and then like never mind, let's pivot, and then like people yeah. still sell fun. Yeah. We have a coworker in Asia, kind of talking to, that talked to us about like the live selling culture mm -hmm. in in China and Japan and everything is just nuts. Like yeah, at a different level than here. So I think we're just we're at the infancy of all of this. Of like and. You know, if like there's you know billions of dollars being sold at e-commerce, like it, it makes sense that absolutely every category could be a live show. Yeah, you know? and what what not in general um, has just as an app, as like literally an app has updated so much. Like over the past, I've been on there since March of 2021, and I remember in I want to say September of 2021, I shut down the whole app because I had someone bid $11,600 and it shut down the app. Wow. And now like so, like it was for the last like 15 packs, it was when I had like a NT box and I naturally pulled a gold Justin Herbert NT RPA to wow. 10 out of that box, um, which is nuts. So it was worth every single dollar. Um, it was the horizontal one, not the true, but still yeah. uh, pretty, probably one of the biggest cards I've ever pulled. Um, but yeah, it's it's very crazy how the technology and everything with whatnot as a whole has really transformed and evolved. Uh, speaking of quarterbacks, what's your take on, <laughs> and I, I know we're laughing, but what's your take on new quarterbacks that are selling for more money than a proven quarterback like Aaron Rodgers? What's your, what's your yeah, take on that? Um, oh, man. 
<laughs> Floor's yours, man. Yeah, <laughs> some of it's you're just, talking before this. You, I know, you're, some, you're of it's just, some of it's just funny. I mean, realistically, like, I don't, I didn't want to come in here and tell people, like, what I'm buying, but sure. Jalen, Jalen Hurts is just way too cheap. And, like, I realistically didn't want to draft Jalen Hurts. I really didn't like Jalen Hurts, but now he's my guy. He's my QB1. I'm an Eagles fan. But um, just a comparison. <laughs> when it comes to silver, prism, PSA 10 autographs, Joe Barrow sells for 5 to 6K. Kenny Pickett sells for $1,500. Jalen Hurts sells for eighteen dollars to 2000 Joe Barrow and Jalen Hurts both lost in the Super Bowl, and he's 2X. I, granted, Joe Barrow is a bad man, right? Yeah. But Jalen Hurts is on a top three team of football, arguably. Uh, it really just does. And then you have Sam Howe creeping up, and his it does like $800. So when it comes to when it comes to that buildup, it really doesn't make any sense, and I really think Jalen Hurts is a buy, um, especially – I get scared because there was a lot of hype with the Eagles after the draft. Um, but now people are starting to downplay them and like, guys can't repeat doing this and all that jazz. And when all that negativity comes from the media, it only motivates the team. Um, and I can't wait to see what they actually do. Because um, I realistically, like I said, I fade the public in almost everything that I do. Yeah. So the fact that the public is starting to doubt the Philadelphia Eagles makes me feel like they're only going to have like, I wonder if like, the, money, the money like is kind of just like, there's so much speculation on guys like Hal and 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 whatever that they like, the money kind of funnels away from yep. guys like Hertz. Like he's a little boring because we know like we know he's good now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Absolutely. now it's like ah, like they forget. And, yep. and, you know they want that new hot thing. Yep. And it's him and um, I mean him and Lamar kind of sell relatively close as well. But Lamar again, he was on an MVP, but he hasn't really done anything when it matters. And that's the same aspect as Josh Allen. Um, when it matters the most, he's fumbling, he's freaking out, he's throwing interceptions like falling around um and I, I really this is a hot take but i don't even have josh allen in my top five qbs right now um my top are, five qbs yeah mine are Mahomes, burrow hertz herbert lawrence uh, allen six jackson seven rogers eight. keep going <laughs> <laughs> i guess geno smith nine which is crazy to say and then Jarek off 10 um, yeah but I, I agree with you though like the, the pricing just doesn't make sense and i and i get that people like want like like ellie de la cruz like i no, like, that was that. awesome. <laughs> That's like, awesome. I mean, shoot, like if you're still in every goddamn base, like of course, yeah, of course. like he's a stud. He looks the part too. Yes. Like he just looks like a super. Star. But that that's I hate to go cross sports, but like Ellie De La Cruz looks the part. Sam Howe struggled in the ACC. How is he gonna look yeah. the part on at FC East with the Eagles defensive line? Seeing them twice a year, like it's gonna be a little bit of a problem. So I don't. Yeah. Ellie De La Cruz has never not looked the part. And that's the thing. Sam Howe has not looked the part. So how is he selling for almost relatively I, I close? I feel like this is like, it turns me off from the football market in general a little yeah. bit. Because it's like, I want to participate. And like, I don't mind participating and just kind of selling off before I got to see yeah. him play. Yeah. But it's like almost out of principle. Like it's, you don't want to, sometimes if you don't believe in it, you don't want to even participate mm -hmm. in the market. Because it's like, Absolutely. hey, this doesn't make sense. I don't want to be the guy that gets held with it yeah. or you know, someone, you know, tweaks an ankle and now they're not the starter yeah. the week one and I didn't even believe them in the first place and now yeah. I just have this card. Like, makes me want to buy basketball now. Of course. Because of yeah. the craziness of the offseason in football. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, realistically, when it comes to football, you should have been buying football in January. Like, yeah. February. like right at the yeah. Super Bowl when it all dropped, that was the time to buy your QBs because now, like, guys like Sam Howe sell for $1,000 because yeah. it's getting close and people are getting excited and whatnot. Um, but when it comes to football in general, it, collecting football is a little bit different because people collect their favorite players, favorite positions, whether it's numbered cards, autos, RPAs, all that jazz. But when it comes to really making money in the football market, I feel like the only right investment is the quarterbacks. Um, Do you think football sets the market for every other sport? Like, is it does it go football, baseball, Bowman prospecting, then basketball? Like, <sighs> honestly, man, think about that too. I'll be completely honest. I think first Bowman runs it. And when it comes to prospects, sets the whatever. bar. A little yeah, bit. I mean, if you think about it, like what sells the most consistently, other than football and T quarterback RPAs, it's in first Bowman PSA cards. I think it's like the strongest, like the most bullish collector base and investor base is in the Bowman firsts. I wouldn't consider the football market isn't bullish because it's it's it just blows with the wind, of right? Course, like I think the the baseball market collects and invests with more conviction and they'll hold their stuff for years. Like they're more like midterm Absolutely. investors. Absolutely. Short football's so short. It's like of course. every it's week to week. It, yep. The off season's even week to week. It could be of course. how it could be hot this week. And then people are like, what about Ritter? 
I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, Ritter, yeah. Ritter, oh my, Ritter's a whole other guy. Like yeah. Ritter's selling. I've seen, you know, I'm seeing ten thousand dollar Ritter car. That's insane. Like, that exists. That's insane. Insane. It's knocks. They're not going to be bad. I mean, honestly, the, like Kenny Pickett sells pretty well too. I don't think the Steelers are going to be bad either. And I'll be honest, whoever comes out of that division is going to be ready to play in the playoffs. That division is ridiculous right now. Because people are sleeping on the Steelers, man. Tomlin's one of the, Tomlin's probably. I mean, who's the who were the Tomlin is probably the best coach in that division. The Bengals are probably the best team, but Zach Taylor isn't a good coach. You see them losing games because yeah. of the position that Zach Taylor is putting them in. Not really on Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow makes minimal mistakes, and that's why he's such a good quarterback. Lamar Jackson makes a ton of mistakes. Um, and Har it's not really on Harbo. It's on Jackson running out of the pocket, fumbling, throwing an interception because he's on the run, all that jazz. But the Steelers are a low-key, fundamentally sound team and can run with that whole division because those games are tight. When the, when the AFC North plays – they're never blowouts, and if it is, they're going to get you back. And again, the Browns are even that division too, and you got Stefanski and Deshaun Watson. But that division is going to be the AFC North is going to be super serious. I got. I think I messaged you before. I, I think this year, this football season, I'm going to text you on the side like, "Yo, what's the play? Let's play." Yeah. Well, that's, Eagles, that's Eagles a, money line week one against that's that's a, uh, Listen, every every Sunday by eleven o'clock, that's posted on my story. I give out. Yeah, I'll, I'll take you to uh, give out whatever for free. What was it? Rouse on Nice Street, yeah. South Philly. Well, if, you, if you take care of me, my, so, we wait. I'll uh, I'll go out to nice nice dinner. Um, uh, when you're buying cars, are you for yourself personally to either flip or for like your repacks? Like, mm -hmm. are you buying raw or is it all? Um, if I'm going to buy raw, it's going to either be a numbered card, autograph, patch auto. Uh, if I'm going to buy something that's not one of those, it's going to be graded. Um, obviously, I'm going to buy whatever I can get in at the right price. The way people are buying right now is kind of nuts. Um, I haven't been able to really buy less than like 85% in months. Yeah. Um, and that's because of how competitive the remac repack market is becoming. Because um, realistically, I've been doing this for two and a half years now, right? Making repacks. But now so many other people are doing it and respect to them because now they get to mix it in their breaks and all that jazz. It's part of the game. Great, everyone's able to make money, but it makes the market that much higher because people are able to buy at a higher rate, um, which obviously comes with the market in general. Even though the market has dipped, doesn't mean people are stop buying yeah. <laughs> at all. Um, what card are you chasing right now that you want? Like, like uh, that you, I mean, is it more Jalen Hurts Silvers? Uh, nah, nah, nah. Is that Realistically, during the off season, I bought. I should have brought. I really should have brought the cards. Um, I bought a ton of Alec Boehm and Bryson Stott. Um, Dude, have, Stott's a stud. I have all their colors. Uh, I have the Bryson blue. I got his orange, the twenty five auto PSA ten. I got Boehm's red, the five. I have oh, nice. Yeah, I have, I have a Boehm orange. Yeah, I have, I have a Boehm black. Uh, I can, all autos too, except the red is not as a non auto. But Alec Boehm, mm -hmm. Bryson Stott. When it comes to my collection, it's straight Philly stuff. Like everything is Philly. Um. It hasn't really been Eagles. Like I mixed in my Brian Dawkins autos here and there if I can find them. And then like I love N'Kobe Dean. So I've I have like a bunch of N'Kobe Dean stuff. Um, but when it comes to my collection, it's all Philly guys. The thing that I'm chasing right now, realistically, nothing crazy. I mean, I would probably if if it came in my lap, would love, would live wow, would love just just something simple. Um there's a, it's out there. I know it's out there. Uh, Brace Harper Dynasty to ten. Um, nothing crazy. I'm like when it comes to my collection, I just I just love Philly stuff. Yeah, and I don't have a Bryce Harper piece, and that's realistically all all I'm missing right now. I think Harper is so undervalued. Like his stuff is so cheap so too, cheap, man. Yeah. He's super cheap, and so is Manny Machado as well. But they're kind Machado, of the same player like, almost. You could probably name ten uh, current MLB players that are not respected in the hobby. Freddie Freeman, Trey Turner sells for zero. Yeah, right. Like he, yeah, he just bought Trey Turner a few weeks ago. Dude. Yeah, his, his uh, BGS nine five boom finally got down to like what the nines were doing in April, and I was like, well, I'll take a, I'll take a, you know, I'll just take it in the stash, put it in my PWCC vault. Yeah, yeah. I think the Phillies are good. Like I think they're gonna make a run in they the can. playoffs. It's, yeah. it's exciting. He was, <laughs> on, he was on Fox Sports uh, last year. Yeah, I was on a couple games. I I actually flew home from Miami uh, to go to that World Series game, mm -hmm. and now I'm immortal with that clip. Uh, yeah, Every, everyone sent it to me. I probably would. I probably get it at least once a week. You were with your bro, right? Uh, that was my little cousin. That's and then Barstool Sports wrote on uh, article: Fox captured every moment perfectly, and it said father son, and it was uh, my, me and my cousin and my. Know, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> it was nuts. It was a uh, oh man. Yeah, I was at the World Series when they won it all in 08, Same both here. parts of the game. When I was yeah. ten years old. Um, so to really experience it and fully indulge last year was just, I mean, when the Philly teams make a run, there's nothing like it. Um, to me, I, I don't know how you feel. I know you, you seem like a bigger Eagles fan, 
but like the Phillies was so much more me- yeah. to me than the Eagles. Were. To me, it's or, it's, it's kind of a it's a tight race, and then it's a far drop off when it gets to the rest of them. But the the Phillies and Eagles are a super tight race. I'm fully indulged in both. I watch all their obviously watch their games, go to their games. Well, hopefully by the time this episode airs or a year from now, like the Sixers will figure the you know what <laughs> out because I realistically can't. God damn, I, I can't talk about the Sixers. Yeah, no. I felt, I mean, we, we talk about it at least once a week. Like, I legitimately felt disrespected. How they, oh, yeah. like you disrespected the fan base by like performing like that at Game Seven. Like well, you can lose, yeah. just lose, but don't make me turn off the game in the third quarter. Yeah, I'm so ch- I was so <laughs> checked out this year. I think I watched collectively probably including playoff games like twelve. Games. You started to get hyped though. Right, I did. right for a second there. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. I, I was That's like, how they get you, bro. I'll be honest. I was off the wagon. I was off the wagon. 50 feet away, because I just, I didn't, I knew I was going to get hurt again, and guess what, we got hurt. Yeah, I could, while I was watching the regular season, like, you can just watch a team, like, if you watch them a lot of games, like, I knew the Sixers just didn't have it, like, you, and then watching the Eagles last year, like, they had it, they'd have win the game, but absolutely. you can just feel it about a team when you, yeah. you have that trust, like, of course, hey, they're down in this moment, like, I trust my team isn't going to let me down, Yeah, the, the Sixers felt like, I'm waiting for them to let me down, even yeah. when they were winning. Yeah. Like, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. And it's kind of funny about that. And even Embiid's, like, undervalued in the hobby. He, yeah. well, honestly, all the big men, even Jokic, just yeah. is a two-time MVP, just won finals MVP. But meanwhile, like, I'm nothing against Cole Anthony, but, like, Cole Anthony, Jalen Green, like, I mean, Lamelo Marcel- for Ritter. Money. R- realistically, Lamelo Ball has not done anything in the league. He sells more than Jokic, every single one of his cards. Yeah. Jokic has two finals. Or excuse me, two MVPs, a final yeah. MVP, and now a championship. Yeah, and Lamelo Ball sells for more than him because of Lamelo Ball. Do you think that would ever like correct? Like how how do, how does the hobby I, I, correct? I, I don't that? know. Hope, like hopefully, in a from a does his, it never happen? In a historic standpoint, it corrects itself. But I don't know how. I mean, I think it's sport to sport. It's across every car. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. Like yeah. and it's positions as well. Like yeah. when it comes to the the guards, the shooters, like they just sell more. People they put on a better show than Jokic. Even though it's really hard to do because he kind of is the man. We just don't um, like him because we're on B guys. All right, Mark, last question. <laughs> we asked all of our guests this uh, on Car John. Uh, where do you see the hobby a year from now? Um, I see the hobby continuing to expand. Um, to be honest, I think the more Michael Rubin has his hand in it, the more it expands. Uh, obviously, um, everything that guy touches turns into gold, it seems like. Um, and realistically, I can't see it not growing, expanding, obviously reaching um, a further audience as well. Um, but realistically, when it comes to the hobby in general, man, it's all about the kids. So, like, I have a little brother. He is fully indulged uh, in the hobby now. Uh, he bought a, he was able to get a Kenny Pickett raw silver auto for, like, 200 bucks. I have an out in greeting. Hopefully he attends and he's going to make, you know, make a thousand bucks, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but realistically, when it comes to the hobby growing and seeing it expand, it's all about the kids. Because uh, realistically, it's all about the next generation, I'm sure. Obviously, anybody that participates in a pack show or anything obviously loves the gamble of opening the cards. Um, but you really got to just extend that to the kids um, and the joy of the players. And even seeing a kid get a, you know, a base Jalen Hurts raw card out of a pack is they're lit. You know what I'm saying? Just that little bit of excitement is how the hobby grows from the kids. Yeah. Uh, how can people follow you on social media or participate in your uh, repack and your uh, breaks? Yeah, social media, it's all prestige underscore polls with a Z um, on whatnot and Instagram. Uh, Instagram is most likely weekly videos, whatnot. Um, we ru- we sell singles throughout the week. Uh, we do uh, have a couple guys do retail breaks as well. And then I run my repack show every single Tuesday night at uh, 8.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Love it. Awesome, man. This has been a great episode. We could probably talk another 30 minutes on the process of the Sixers and yeah, <laughs> I mean, we might curse on that bond. Yeah, but, uh, absolutely. But cool, man. Mark, Mark Franklin, thanks so much uh, for Siege Pools for coming on Car John. And you know what Car John means, and this is special because yeah, you're John. You have some nice Johns. Yeah. <laughs> your, car, your cars are nice. Um, but yeah, thank you so much again. Follow Mark uh, on Prestige Pools on uh, Instagram and everywhere else. And uh, yeah, it was a great episode. So thanks everyone for watching uh, another episode here of Car John, powered by Collects and Car Dealer Pro. We'll see you.